What is your diagnosis? Multiple hereditary exhaustive. Why do you say so? <laughs> you can quickly palpate if you want, no problem. So, uh, in the epiphyseal region, there are multiple swellings all, all over the body. Uh, he's not achieved his uh, uh, maturity and there are multiple swellings in the epiphyseal region all over the bodies. Before giving your diagnosis, you can ask one question to the patient. What do you want to ask? Since when is it swelling? So tell the, before telling the diagnosis of hereditary multiple exosis, what question you want to ask? The short service is. Right, what are what are regions of the bodies are you? So you want to ask whether any, any, any other member of the family is affected by this disease? Yes, sir. Okay. You just ask. Sister is having. What is the mode of inheritance in this disease? Autosomal dominant inheritance. But many of the cases may be sporadic also. Okay. So you said there are so many swellings in the body. Which are the swellings you are more worried about? What examination you do in the, if you see the case is like if you see the multiple exosters generally? So the, the swelling examination. Okay, one is swelling examination. But you know from the look also you can say it is a exostosis. What is very important and relevant examination will you do? Yeah. Joint joint examination. Okay, joint examination. Why do you think so joint examination? So what are functions are uh, okay so one function so how will you quickly evaluate the function because it would be very commonly kept in a short case so you have to see that okay I will ask you the question what are the indication for removing the exostosis uh, progressive deformity progressive deformity so, so you have to see deformity is it so if it's a progressive deformity, you have to see from deformities. Okay. Then, any other indication? Uh, any pain? Pain. So, you have to ask for a pain. Is it uh, having painful or not? Okay. Then? Uh, pressure symptoms. So, you have to check about the pressure symptoms. What pressure symptoms? Sir, uh, any neurovascular deficits. Neurovascular deficit. So, you have to see about the distal neurovascular. Okay. Then? So, no. fracture. So, whether it is a painful fracture or again, it will cause a pain. So, it will cause a pain. Then? What are the other problems other than deformity also? Growth disturbance. So, growth disturbance. How do you know the growth disturbance? It can lead to the valgus varus or it can lead to the lengthening, shortening. Very common to have the where two bones will cause the problem. Which two bone will cause the problem? Very common to have common sites is there. Which is the common site for osteochondroma? Of lower end of femur. Lower end of femur, proximal end of tibia, and an upper limb is distal end of uh, distal end of ulna. So it is distal end of ulna. What can lead to the distal end of ulna? DRUJ. Can anybody? Yes, it can lead to the wrist deformity, it can lead to the shortening of ulna. When there is a shortening of ulna, what will happen? Relative, radius, radius will be longer or shorter? It could be longer. So what is there? We can see it easily <coughs> the lateral aspect of the just proximal forearm. The radial aid is very commonly come out. So it will go for the wrist deformity, it can lead to the elbow deformity. You can see it is going for the cubitus varus also. You can see about that the radial head has come out also. That's very common to have. Okay, so you can check about the supination and pronation. 
Okay, and the least, but very common, you ask in the exam, it turned out to be in malignancy. malignancy. So it's very important that you can see these are the indications. What are the indications? You want to check for that. Okay, this is very commonly asked question. So you have to quickly check that. At this age, do you expect malignant changes? What is the age of the patient? Where is common to have the malignancy? Which, which particularly osteoconroma can lead to the malignancy and what age? So it's very common to ask in the, the adult also. Their father also will be kept. Sometimes father also will be kept also. I can see usually occur only after the skeletal maturity usually. Axial or peripheral. Which is more prone? Peripheral. Which is more prone for migrancy? Axial. Axial. It is said that the body temperature is higher in the axial skull. So that will be having a greater metabolic activity. That is said to be the reason why axial osteochondromas are more, uh, they have a greater propensity for animal's age. When will you do the excision of these things in multiple exercises patients? Will you do it early? Will you do it late? Like, uh, I would look for the uh, pressure symptoms, uh, whether it is symptomatic, and I would like to remind. Any difference of opinion? Okay. Ideally, it should be done as late as possible. Should, if it is done early, it can lead to greater amount of growth disturbance. Moreover, dissection will be very difficult, especially in a, when it is nearer to the vessels. When you dissect out it again, you may not be able to dissect out the vessel. So, as late as possible, if possible uh, after the skeletal maturity. But when there is a deformity, we have to do it early, definitely. Why the forearm is the most deformed part of skeleton in multiple exercises? My dear boy, you've been asked to see this as a spotter. Have you been permitted to talk to him? Yes. No. You don't know him. One question that was the, the family. family. Have you actually gone to the... You, your diagnosis or clinical impression was the hereditary exostosis. Can you tell what made you to say this is a case of hereditary exostosis? What is a hereditary exostosis? Which runs in families. Hmm? The disease which runs in families. Mm -hmm. And uh, the more family members will be affected. No, no. When do you call uh, multiple exostosis? Hereditary exostosis, uh, sometimes also referred as diaphyseal or metaphyseal achalasis. When do you say that? When there are multiple swellings over the body mm. and uh, when, the, when similar complaints are present in a family and uh, uh, it is uh, causing problems like... Uh, no, incomplete answer. So he told you that his father also has got. True, good, that is an important point. So three things must be there to say that he has hereditary or multiple exostosis of diaphyseal ecclesis. There should be a traceable family history. The patient should have multiple exostosis and the patient should have stunting of growth or growth rusts. Then only you say, all these things, uh, when you see, you have seen that it will be there. It will be there. You said, what is the pathology in this condition? It's aberrant uh, growth plate. Aberrant? Uh, aberrant uh, growth plates. Growth plate is aberrant. 
So you should produce what? When, the, when you say aberrant, it means it's not normally functioning. So the, all his sites where are swelling, the growth plate is aberrant. Then why did you say this is a uh, manifestation of achondroplasia? Which is a, a condition which is affecting the growth plate potential for growth. Or maybe to say this is the, if it is a growth plate problem. What is the fundamental pathology in multiple or solitary exostosis or osteochondroma? Where is the pathology? In the, in the epiphysis. Hmm? In the metaphysis. So you, you are changing because of the prompting coming from. So th these are things which you are going to perpetuate to the next generation as a teacher. If you don't learn today and know only how to chop off the osteochondroma, you will never be doing justice to the medical education. So change of attitude. Which is the other condition that produces multiple swellings similar to this in the body? I am saying this is a case of Olier's disease or multiple enchondromatosis. How will you clinically distinguish between the two? Anybody wants to tell? Yeah. Enchondromas usually affect the short long bones. Second, it is usually unilateral. Third, it produces limb-length discrepancies quite often because only one side of the body is affected. Anything else, sir? If you get a case of osteomyelitis, colis fracture, osteochondroma, and even the most intelligent student can be trapped down if he has not sound in his basic knowledge. What is Lead's sign? Anybody else? What is Lead's sign? Osteoman robot. Usually, the osteochondroma will be growing away from the epiphysis. So if you palpate from the diaphysis, you can feel a sharp step off. But if you palpate from the epiphysis, what you will be feeling is a slow transition into the swelling. So the abrupt step that you feel when you are palpating from the diaphysis, that is called the lead sign. Lead sign of step sign. So I think we'll... Uh, in nutshell, any one of you who will get this, use a word called as, I would like to serially examine this patient and what KCG sir has pointed out, the bystander, if it is father or sister who has come, very smartly you should answer, Sir, so I see the father or the sister disproportionate. That is why you are using hereditary. The word hereditary which you use is to be very specifically added on. Multiple exosis, you have not even examined the patient, only saw the patient. So say that I would like to palpate all the swellings. From top to bottom, just groom your hand on top. During examination, whenever you see such patient, try to roll your hand from top to bottom like that. At least do that particular clinical judgment that you have examined all the appendages of the patient to say it is multiple. Second, you have seen the bystander to say hereditary, exosuses of course, like what has been told to you, and anything which you have to substantiate, when would you like to operate? Sir, I would like to do a serial examination of this child and keep the child in follow-up. Pain is not always the only symptom for which you should operate. Even numbness, which is responsible because of the overgrowth, the deformities, which have been other causes. Always in orthopedics, we say 
pain is the cause for surgery. No, there is numbness. You can get all the other signs which could be there. So please incorporate in a smarter way after attending doctor to say that numbness can also be or a neurological deficit can be the indication for a surgery at the age of skeletal maturity. Now you could say between 16, 18, depending upon the pre pubertal type. These are vacation surgeries. These are never emergency surgeries. Thank you.